actually after listening to Howard Stern for an hour today, I was like, oh, it is kind of cool to like have radio voice. I mean, yeah, your voice yeah. like sounds perfect. So we we got a couple of dildos over here, and uh, someone from Hustler dropped off some dildos. Hey, they got Mac DeMarco in the studio. Ba-ba-boo-y. What's your What's your deal? Get on the Sabian. Ba-ba-boo-y. Get on the Sabian. Sabian. Which one of us is gonna be Robin? <laughs> <laughs> You're now listening to the Bradshaw Boys. A podcast where three relatively grown men binge the iconic HBO series, Sex and the City. So dust off those DVDs and grab yourself a white wine or even the Cosmopolitan and settle in. Take it away, boys. And welcome to the Bradshaw Bradshaw Boys. Bradshaw Boys. Three guys watching their way through Sex and the City for the first time ever, mostly. I'm Kevin James Doyle. John Sieber. I'm Corey Cavan. And the reason why we're gathered here, we all three got together to watch every single episode of Sex and the City. I'm at my fifth episode. What are you guys at? Like your ninth or tenth? Probably ninth or tenth. Well, I Maybe think 11th. a lot of those episodes that we've been watching are the ones that I've seen. So I think I've seen five episodes in total now. I'm, okay. Yeah. I'm maybe at like somewhere between, somewhere between nine and eleven is where I'm at. <laughs> I was gonna just say that I don't want to get into that discussion, but I was that what, was literally what discussion. You're just talking about what episodes you see. Yeah, I don't want to get in the discussion about how I've watched more episodes than you guys. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> I. Yeah. I. Uh, That's all I mean. I think um, so far I texted Corey today and I was like, I'm excited about Bradshaw, Bradshaw boys tonight. And he's like, oh, yeah, me too. And I said not to do the podcast, just to watch an episode. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> this is the, w- can we get through this intro so we can watch the show? You, you know this is just going to be us meeting up on Tuesdays watching Sex and the City in, in like six months, right? Yeah. We don't record anymore. No one listened to it. So we're, we're just watching. It became just like a TV watching club without record this wasted hour where we talk about it. The cool thing, the actual surprising thing was we found out our recording engineer was never recording it anyway. Yeah. He, he, he was, just wanted his own excuse to watch it. He just wanted his own excuse to watch it. It was just four guys that were too afraid to admit they just wanted to watch Sex in the City. Like maybe if we put these microphones in front and and yeah, that's not that's a fake computer, it's, fake recording equipment. Just it's just a YouTube, YouTube video, video <laughs> put it full screen of like levels going up it's and like down. It's like the, fi- the fake fire at a, at a holiday party. Yeah, it's just some, <laughs> that's some the, bars. That's the kind instant of fireplace of podcast recordings. Yeah, it's um, wait. So you guys actually thought I was recording? You guys talk about Sex and the City for forty five minutes? <laughs> We're like no five hundred episodes in. What what is there? Two sixty two, two sixty three. Uh, episodes yeah uh maybe there's what six seven seasons or six seasons season six is broken into two parts i think i don't know there's probably well, we two got a real what are the sex in the city fans called uh carry heads <laughs> like parrot heads are for jimmy buffett they're carry called carry heads. heads um 168 I don't know. episodes 168? 168 168 is that is that what we're thinking I and think so, so we're at least going to have 168 episodes we also have the movies to get through we also have some special Episodes where we can like have salons of people come in and be like, so let's talk about it. Let's That's talk true. about anal. That's true. Pretend we're in the back of a cab. Let's get another person in here, and then and someone's got to play the cab driver to yeah. look back and be like, whoa. And then you got to <laughs> slam on the brakes. You got to be like, uh oh. That's what it's like. That's what it's like. It's and like it's- slamming on the brakes. We also gonna have you. We're gonna have salons. We're gonna have Solange. Solange. Beyonce's sister. Yeah. She's gonna do an episode. Mm-hmm. I'm calling that now. I bet we. She might want to do it. I don't know. So there's 94 episodes. 94 oh, okay, episodes. Okay, cool. We, we're All almost right, cool. over. We're, All, right, we're, cool. All right, cool. Well, we're, good. The end is near. Yeah. The end is nigh. Um, I hear so many people, since I've told people we're doing this, because we um, haven't released any of these yet, um, and I've told people about it, and they're like, when does it come out? Like, I can't wait till you get to uh, the, the second movie, because it's so fucking bad. Yeah, it's pretty And I'm crazy. like, that's like two years from now are <laughs> so, we just gonna watch 30 minutes at a time and then the talk movies. about that and then watch another 30 minutes and, and talk about that or are we gonna just get through it all at once i don't know i feel I like know, we'll have to do this. uh I, I don't know what we'll, by that point hopefully we'll have some listeners right now we're just in an echo chamber of yeah. ourselves you know it's just like my thoughts and just time. like our political climate now you know once we release this out into the world we're gonna really have your voices be a part of this podcast be a part of the conversation 
Hit us up on Twitter. We don't have a Twitter account. Hit us up on Instagram. We have one. I don't know what it is. Just hit us up on my private cell phone number, which is... I should give out someone else's number. <laughs> <laughs> hit us up on... And then I just give my mom's number. 330 Barb Doyle. Barb Doyle. <laughs> Barb Doyle, everyone. Hit Barb up and tell him what Ask you think. Ask if she's done anal. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy! Uh, you know well, that that is going to happen, though, right? I know, I know. Oh, because listen. there's going to be some people that listen to it that have my mom's actual I number. Was, I was, and also I was going to say, I mean, people could probably find your mom on Facebook or some other social media without having her number. Yeah, well, she's, you just said her name. You also have friends that are on your family plan, so when they call me, it actually says Barb Doyle. I do. <laughs> you know, we game this. I feel like everyone's on their family plan now. We game the system early. And we got my one my one friend. We're just like we have an extra line open, and he was paying like one hundred twenty two dollars a month for his BlackBerry. He was also still paying for his ex girlfriend's cell phone plan, and they broke up two years before. <gasps> and then he's like, would complain to me about relationship stuff. And, and then be you'd like, be like, "What's wrong with you? You still have a BlackBerry, and yeah. you're paying this girl's old phone bill? Yeah. Who was this friend? It was he was an eighty six year old unemployed man who was just like, I don't know how to do any of this. I also have a girlfriend and a BlackBerry. What do I do, Kevin? I'm from this, not from this country, and I, uh, Kevin, help me. Can I be? Take me into your family." Please. My wife Let- died. I got the girlfriend, and then she she found out that she I was just supposed to pay for her bill. How do you work this thing? What's BBM? <laughs> do people use BBM anymore? I'm still on AOL as well. I for, the poor people that created BlackBerry and thought we're on top of the world. They were. It, listen, BlackBerry. Black. I I don't know why I'm about to be an apologist for BlackBerry, but it was. Huge. It's like such a, yeah. it was. It was always the, the it professionals took, that had it. Yes, it was always the professionals. And they had two of them for some, or like three of yeah, them. Yeah, they always had a bunch of them. Like, and I think if you worked in corporate America, every Excuse department, <laughs> you had to have a BlackBerry. Yeah. Like you, you had one for accounting and one for marketing and human resources. Even up to like five years ago, maybe. So many people. They yes. would have multiple Blackberries. I remember people that were on Blackberries being like, I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to make the switch to an iPhone. I mean, what do you do? It, well, and I remember some people making the argument being like, well, it doesn't have BBM. That which was, was like, I don't even know what BBM it's is. It's Blackberry Messenger, and it was an app that people like swore by. But now people just text. I know. So but funny. The that, reason why it was so popular is because all of the messaging on Blackberry was encrypted. Uh, and, and so that's why it was all. And the reason why Blackberry is still around is because they had all the people in the government used it. Because the messaging was like the safest, which is why my character earlier was Russian, was because <laughs> it was a topical character. Exactly. But remember when Obama was elected? There was a big in two thousand eight. There was like a big article that went around that was like Barack Obama is going to keep his BlackBerry. Yes, like he was nervous to get rid of it, and that was that was a story. I remember that. I remember that. Also, doesn't Trump now? There was a story a little while ago that Trump has an a smartphone. I think it was an iPhone, and it only has one app, and it was Twitter. someone needs to just download him some other apps and then he wouldn't use it anymore he's just using if we get him the snake game just get him snake or (laughs) drug wars drug something (laughs) just something mafia on on the ti-83 taking a shit he'll actually be preoccupied with something other than ruining our country (laughs) oh my gosh my shit you could trade loots for ten (laughs) dollars this is this is amazing. Wait, is Drug Wars an app game? Where I'm you sure like, they. I'm sure they. I'm sure you can get it. Download him BBM and tell him it's Twitter, and he's just sending messages to to dead BlackBerry users. Not not the dead people, but the dead app. The, those the were the dead... people. Those are the people that voted for Crooked Hillary. <laughs> the Crooked Hillary voters were the dead BBM users. That's where they got the votes from. The, if you the, add them up, it's the same number. If you add them up, it's the same. It's the same number. It's the same. They're all in New Hampshire. Popular vote my ass. It was the dead BBM users. That's who it was. When was the last episode or the last um, episode of Sex in the City? Like, when did it end? In 2007? Uh, 2000. I have no it was, idea. I think it was later than that because, because the movies were in the the late aughts. Because I just wonder if we're going to get into Smartphoneville. Mm-hmm. Because it is such a, it does change the dynamic of a scene in a, in. It does. That's something that is weird in movies now. The um, mess and how to deal with how messages. to deal how, with text come in, coming onto screen. In TV show and movies, they still can't get the ringer right. It's still like a, a ringer <laughs> yeah. that they a ringtone that is never ever used in in the real world. 
the iPhone ringer. The final episode of Sex in the City it was in 2004. Wow. So that's pre smartphone. Pre iPhone. Because iPhone came out 2009. 2009. 2009, I believe, is when iPhone came out. Yeah, no, it was when I was in college. And I graduated in 08. So I think it was 08 or 07. Oh, well, you're right. It was, uh, I think it was. I think it was, uh, <laughs> Jeremy's just it like, was in 2007. You're right. Never mind. Really? I think I got an iPhone in 2009 and nothing before that matters. You didn't have, you, did you ever have a Blackberry? No, I never had a Blackberry. I had a flip phone until I, I got a an iPhone. I was a big Razor guy. Uh, yeah. Razor was one of the best phones. Razor was pretty solid. I would, I would say this, one of the best use of texting in a movie for, it's not very realistic, but it is, it is semi-realistic and it is like tense because now it like pops like on house of cards it'll just like pop up on the screen and everything but do you remember in the departed when he texts yes in his pocket, in the pocket. with the t9 yes oh it's great so good and they did that it seems like it shouldn't work but that like weird shot that like tr- it like dissolves and then you see his hand in the pocket yeah it's so it's such a good shot and it actually i think it's old enough i feel like it's old enough that it it holds up that like it it holds up because it's like oh yeah I remember what it was like to text on a phone like that it doesn't feel dated yeah because it's well, so old and so the shot goes inside the pocket and when kids watch it now they'll be like your guys' pockets used to be so big <laughs> ten years ago no, they can fit cameras inside of them yeah that is one thing that 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 distortion <laughs> throws off the, that that breaks the reality the I'm movie. getting that's what I thought when I watched the movie too I'm getting like, I'm getting looks of how not funny that was. <laughs> <laughs> also, your jackets were so translucent that a Panavision lens could shoot through them. Welcome right. to the Film Nerds Podcast. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna put for our for our Twitter followers and our Instagram followers. We're gonna put the scene on our Instagram. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep dropping stuff, and then when people ask, we're gonna be like, "What did we record a month ago?" Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, right. I, uh, I liked The Departed. That was all I was gonna say. We have a we have a um. A show to watch. Episode that we need to watch. Do we do we have the uh, description of it? The title is The Power of Female Sex. Ooh. The Power of the Female Sex? Or the... No, just The Power of Female Sex. The Power, comma, Female Sex? The Power, Female, comma, Sex. sex. But it's S-E-C-T-S. Sex. Sex. <laughs> sex. A lot of things. Lies and video see. Team. What? yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, the power of female sex, hmm. which I feel like that would be. What was the first? That was, it sounds similar to the first episode, right? I don't remember. The women have the power in sex. That, Take, I mean, taking it back, I taking, guess. Taking it back. Wait, like, having that, sex the, like, it was, or that about was having sex like a man. Having sex like a man. Yeah, you're right. You're right. That was like just the not power. don't care. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The power of female sex. Hmm. Um, what do you think it's going to be about core? Well, I'll, I'll say this. Uh, also, the the thumbnail for the power of female sex is, uh, which I don't know if we'll always know the thumbnail, but the thumbnail for this one, on like the HBO Go thing, is Carrie holding up a bunch of dollars. Oh, Ooh. and I think she's like sitting in bed or something. Ooh, which that just just like. So is it like the purchasing power of female sex? I think, think it's like, if like... You, it's like buying a stock. You know, it's like the rising power of female sex. Is she, I don't, is she gonna is she gonna find herself in a compromising like like is this oh. am I dating to the point where it's like almost kind of like prostitution where I don't like the guy or like but... an indecent proposal kind of thing? Mm. I I don't know. I feel like it's I knowing our ladies as we don't know them that well yet, but I feel like it's got to be something about like like getting men, stuff. And like men will do anything for sex and they realize kind of like what they could do. And they're like, I like having sex. And also I, I wield this power over men and then they'll do it in their four different ways. The colors of the rainbow, the four women, that's what they are. Well, except there's more than four colors in the rainbow. What, what colors would each of them be? Charlotte. Charlotte's got to be like red hot. Don't yeah. I think Charlotte's got to be red hot. Indigo. Indigo? Charlotte would be indigo? No, I was just thinking. No, I was thinking. That's a color. That's that's Charlotte. Yeah, I was thinking Samantha. You're right. Charlotte is indigo. Charlotte's indigo. Miranda is red. Miranda's red because of her red hair? Violet is um, Samantha. Samantha's violet. Samantha would be yellow because she'd be like, it's okay. Let him piss on you. It's kind (laughs) of cool. (laughs) How do you guys remember the colors of the rainbow? Roy G. Biff? Roy G. Biff. Red, orange, yellow, green, green, blue, violet, indigo. Indigo Violet. 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 Indigo
So what about um, what, what I think Miranda think? could be green because of money. Because she's a lawyer. She likes making money. Green's my favorite sure. color, and Miranda is my favorite character. I think you're onto something. Oh. I think. Uh, are there any boyfriend? Do you think Mr. Big will be in this one? Yeah. Because I hope you, so. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, I think. Uh, I feel like you kind of nail. I feel like this is going to be a good episode just from the title. Our least favorite was Models and Mayhem. And that's I that's my least favorite title too. Yeah, I know. Yeah, not a good. Title. And this, I'm already intrigued. I'm already like, all right, let's let's check this out. Should yeah. we get into it? Let's get into it. Should we see what the power of the female sex is? Let's find out. Let's see what our four girls and Darren have to say about it. Oh, Darren. Uh, he, he turns to them and he goes, "Angels," and they're like, "That's a different show, Darren." What show is that? <laughs> that's Charlie's, Charlie's Angels. Angels. Oh, I thought you were. I thought you meant touched by an angel. <laughs> <laughs> if every episode of Touch by an Angels has turned out with <laughs> Angels, go touch someone. <laughs> All, right. All right, let's go watch it. We'll be back. Episode five, The Power of Female Sex. Carrie bumps into international party girl Amelita and her latest man who in turn introduces her to a French architect. After a one-night stand, Carrie is shocked to find he has left her $1,000 on the bedside table. Samantha tries to get a reservation at New York's hottest new restaurant, Balzac. Charlotte meets Neville Morgan, a renowned artist who paints pictures of her vagina for his latest exhibition. And now, back to the boys. The Bradshaw boys are back. We just watched episode <laughs> 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 like you, I thought you were going to do gonna something go into so much. Like you were flailing your arms, you had the biggest <laughs> grin on your face, and, and that was it, huh? I did have a little white wine during and, that episode. And were, <laughs> yeah, you did. So did I. I wanted to join in, and I, just yeah, didn't, I didn't know, know where you were going, going with it. Can oh you, yeah, I didn't. Um, okay, can you give us something to join in on. I'm going to do the same. Shop boys are back. I'm going to. Okay, um, we'll do the same thing. What I just did is what we're doing. So ready? Okay, so three, no dead air. Here two, we go. One, the, the Bradshaw, Bradshaw boys are, are back. back. The Brads are back in town. There we go. That's what we were looking for. You guys, great songs. Spread good the word around. Okay, the power of female sex. The power of female sex. Wow, interesting conversation that they've been. They're continuing after literally thousands of years. <laughs> Pro, I'm serious. <laughs> Prostitution is is called the oldest job. In the, the world. oldest profession, is that oldest, actually true? The world's oldest that, profession. I've heard that before, but I feel like like someone had to build a a bed before there were prostitutes. No, I right? think like, people were having sex not on beds. Yeah. Well, okay, well and then someone had to like like I would say the I, fucking leaves the to first make job. A, I would say a pallet like, for someone to sleep on. Like, is that true or is that maybe, just something that people always? I think say? it's a saying it's that hunting. is like where there's society. There's people that are going to figure out how to get sex. So, so I mean, I saw maybe, I they, saw it in Pompeii. I saw the whorehouse in in Pompeii. Really? Yeah, they're right there with all the all the drawings and the positions and stuff that you could buy. It, it's there, but the oldest profession. It that- seems like the oldest profession would be like paying for sorcery. To be like, right. it would be like, Paid yes, for you sorcery could, to be like, can you, <laughs> wizard, can you find some girl that'll fuck me? And he's yeah. like, oh, that's a new job. Well, the first <laughs> yeah. job was sorcery, but the next job yeah. was prostitution. Pain for fire. Like, yeah. what is it that? It would that seem you like the, have, and how can I have that? It made my uh, food taste so much better. Right. What you're saying, it shows your vice. You want food more than sex. But I bet there are people that'll be like, I'll go without f- food. I'll go without indoor in like a place to live if i can have sex well nowadays because people can like wash themselves and take care of themselves back then it was like i don't know i don't know if like the the caveman they probably were doing it for pleasure but they were probably just looking oh have you never read the cave masutra (laughs) oh it's a sexy book no but that's true like like maslow's hierarchy of needs is sexual pleasure in that hierarchy of needs it's like food Shelter, love, security. I think security is in there. You know what I'm talking about? Maslow was a smart guy. Yeah, Explain. but could he get it? He couldn't get it. That's why he didn't put it in his hierarchy. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> He's like, he left it out because no one ever wanted to have sex. No one needs it. this anyway. Can you explain what Maslow's hi- hi- hierarchy of needs is? I can quickly. And then we got to get to this episode. Well, I mean, this is but relates. This, this is relates. relates. This, this, rela- is, this okay. is their okay. whole conversation. Okay. 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 I can explain it from a layman's terms, which is myself. 
Um, Maslow's hierarchy of needs is a, uh, and John, I think could maybe explain it better because you were a philosophy major, but, um, this is psychology, this is psychology. Though. See, there you go. Yeah. I was a communications major, which is why I can't even start this discussion. It's basically just, it's like a pyramid of like what a human needs to, uh, survive, be happy, mm-hmm. be productive. And it's, I think it's a pyramid because it's like at the very least you need food and shelter. I know you need I pulled it up here if you want me to. If you I would love that. I would love right, that. So yeah. base needs at the bottom of the, of the pyramid are uh, physiological needs, food, water, warmth, rest. There and then go. up next you have safety needs, security and safety, uh, belongingness and love, which is intimate relationship and friends, and then esteem, feeling of accomplishment, and then last is the self-actualization. That's right. Self-actualization is the top of the pyramid. Including career of activists. So, so you need food, water, warmth, rest, security, safety, then you can start fucking people. Yeah, right. so I, I just think I think if you're looking at the world's oldest professions, people are probably it has to do with that lower rung of the pyramid first, right? I don't know. I I think that the idea that that's also what they're putting is is his hierarchy is not how everyone acts. It's like what a human needs, and then people subvert that, and it ruins that. And this is just one psychologist too. I mean, yeah. do you take someone like Freud who said we act? purely off of sight wasn't he like he was right. basically like you we have this, this wasn't freud's whole thing was that that at the at the highest point this is maybe for men only but like uh by men and but like uh do you guys know what by men and is yeah okay cool. <laughs> just make it say it again say it again by, by men um but uh was maslow pre-freud i don't know i don't know either. in 2017 so. though i think it should be by woman by women. <laughs> by person. By person. I heard that someone took the entire by men in campaign and did a female reboot of it. And now the reboot is by, by women. Woman. And it's all secret deodorant. It's all powder <laughs> it's just, scented. They only they did it in 2017. And I heard it went over well. It's directed by Paul Feig. It's great. I'm what, a, I'm going to do a quick recap of the episode. And we're going to steer yes, this, yeah, we're gonna steer yeah, this do, to the episode. Okay. Because yeah, there is a lot you. to talk about. There is and, a lot. And what we were talking about has to relate to, to the episode. Uh, it starts out with the ladies trying to get into uh, the hottest new restaurant, Ball Ballsack. Ballsack. <laughs> Ballsack. Ball Ballsack. New York's hottest new restaurant, <laughs> Ballsack. Ball Ballsack. Get they, the get the sweatiest food in the city. Uh, get in yeah, there so and Ball testies Sack. out our new dishes. <laughs> they uh, they couldn't get in, so they went to Sweat Pouch. No. Uh, <laughs> they, so New York's hottest <laughs> restaurant is tanked. So, uh, could I get a table at Gooch, please? Uh, I'll no. take the Grundle Burger. <laughs> so they, uh, they, they, uh, she gets, Carrie gets uh, bummed because they can't get into ball sack. So she goes to buy some uh, shoes and she meets, uh, can't afford the shoes, the Dolce and Gabbana. So she meets her friend Amalita, her Italian friend, who uh, buys her the shoes. Uh, her, uh, her suitor purchases the, the shoes. She says not to worry about it. And then the ladies get they uh they get together in a poker game. Very uh, what, what were you guys saying? The poker game was like the poker game. The poker game, I think, is it's a classic a classic trope of a let's have a roundtable discussion. Let's do it. Yeah, but it was done. Let's get our in, views out there. It was done in is it the pilot episode? The pilot episode of Louis of Louis. Where, okay, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, Louis C.K. show. So they discuss they discuss um, sex. They discuss power. They discuss you know uh, Carrie. Uh, all sorts of what what sex is and and is it not is it not okay to use sex for power? Uh, what about men? All 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 sorts of stuff. And um, Charlotte brings up the fact that there's a an artist that she's um, courting to uh, get in his gallery. I believe his name Nevin Morgan. Was it Nevin Morgan? Neville. Neville Morgan. Neville Morgan. Neville Morgan. Anyway, Carrie gets called back to the bar and meets Jeel. Is that his name? Uh, Gilles. Uh, G- uh, you know, I was trying. He's a Frenchman. Name is Gilles. 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 I think it's Gil. G I E, but it's pronounced Gilles. Okay. Couple. Gilles. Couple red flags she pointed out about uh, Gil. Divorce. French. Handsome. All. All big red flags for Bradshaw. Not a red flag for me. Are Listen, you kidding? No I find someone I, who's divorced, French, and handsome. We I'm getting in. married. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they they have they are, they decide to go on a date the next morning. So they do a bunch of shit that no New Yorker would ever do. <laughs> and uh, he leaves. He she sleeps with him, and he leaves her 
a thousand dollars on the bedside table, and that's Cash. the the question of the episode essentially. And, well, and then uh, and then Charlotte goes to the artist's mm-hmm. place, and then he asks mm-hmm. to. Were you going to get to that? Sorry. Y- yeah. Go uh, ahead. Steal. We, steal all my. Uh, go. No, I'm just kidding. He was gonna. He was gonna. Uh, we, you didn't know the use of power up there. Everyone thought like, oh, is he going to be like, can I sleep with you? But instead he has a picture of of what he said is the most powerful force on the planet, mm-hmm. which in his words is the cunt. Mm-hmm. And then his wife comes in and is like, would you like some lemonade? And, and then, cookies. And cookies. And Where's then the he's like, can cookies? I can I paint your vagina, your cunt? Mm-hmm. And Charlotte hates that word. The C word. As do I. And then... Uh, and then you're wondering whether he does or not and what she does about that. Mm-hmm. Mm. And uh, kind of a couple final scenes, I think. The final scene with Carrie, she's back at Balzac. Mm-hmm. Balzac. Gets into Balzac. And, uh, the gatekeeper, the hostess who's not letting him get anywhere. There's a little transfer of power there. Well, first of all, Carrie, uh, you know, meets Amelita again. And Amelita kind of mm-hmm. introduces her to another French or Italian suitor. They plan a trip to uh, Venice. Carrie kind of sees the the trajectory of that date, uh, a trip to Venice, and then uh, another thousand dollars to hang out with the guy, and then a, she says a, an expensive wedding, an expensive marriage, and then an expensive divorce. So yeah. she kind of sees her life path in front of her, and 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 says no after getting a tushy squeeze, and uh, she heads to the bathroom where she meets the most powerful woman in New York. The gatekeeper at Balzac. That's right. The lady who, in every episode, is wearing a ridiculous tiny hat. She's wearing very <laughs> small hats. That, has she hat. been in another episode before? The the, the, Balzac, the tiny hat lady. The tiny hat lady. I'm not sure. She looks so. like. Do you think she? A, do you think she auditioned with that hat on? And they're like, yeah. yes, yeah. That's. I thought she was maybe a grown up and Getty's baby. <laughs> but that was the hat she was wearing in her and Getty's picture. But no, she meets her in the bathroom, yep. and the woman slinks out of a stall and and asks Carrie if she can borrow a tampon. Mm-hmm. And I, th- I think Carrie obliges. I don't mm-hmm. know if we saw that or not. Yeah, she she gives yeah, her she gives, her, she gives her, and that's she... like a power switch. And then the, we end the episode with them at the gallery. Mm-hmm. And, and what happens? And, uh, and Charlotte's showing off all the um, the C word paintings, and they're they're guessing which one is hers. So yeah, um, and they and find they out, find it. and they kind of kind of show half. And then we, yeah, and then we kind of fade out and I see. Fi- f- lots of stuff to talk about. Lots of you stuff guys to talk start? about. Um, one thing that. Do you guys, I have something real quick. Do you guys think it. it was intentional that, uh, I mean, the vagina in this episode was really prevalent. It was, it was not only the source of all um, pleasure. What did he say? He says source of all life, pleasure, and beauty. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. But it's also the, 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 the same thing that takes down the most powerful woman in New York. It's, it's, you know, she's, Oh, do you think that was, uh, was that Darren kind of, kind of doing something right there? Wait, what? Explain what you just, the period does. So she's the most powerful woman in New York. What a a dumb guy. It's it's (laughs) that's awesome. I mean, I think it was, it was interesting. That's what I took away from it. Yeah. No, I hadn't even, that is what kind of gave Carrie, put the power back in her hands to get the table. I thought that was clever. Some things I didn't think were clever were the editing in that episode. Well, I, this is what I was going to bring up, and we don't usually talk about this because it's a pretty standard formatted show, but I I weirdly noticed, like, oh, directed by so-and-so. I forgot the director's name. But the directing style of this episode seemed unlike a lot of other ones. There was weird a lot of slow-mo, weird yeah. slow-mo stuff. There was, well, I think the poker scene was just kind of like your poker scene trope of, like, moving around the camera. Yeah, and that circle. was pretty normal. That was pretty normal. Yeah. But then... There was, and there was a weird thing when she met Amelita the second time. There's all these like strange, crazy zoom ins on all the people yeah. who are all from foreign countries. And they're like laughing. Like, yes. Oh. It, was like, oh. it, it reminded me of like what, what, when movies and TV shows have like a bad drug sequence. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like, yeah. In, like when the guy gets hit with a tranquilizer dart in the neck and he's kind of seeing stuff in like, yeah. old school, in, in, which is just, a fantastic sequence. But that's like what this episode I know. reminded then, me of. And there was another, there's two more things. There was one. That was Carrie after she hangs out with Gil, and she like feels like she's walking on air, and oh, then she's she literally gravity. she literally starts defying gravity, yeah, straight up wicked style, going and into the air. <laughs> you know it. Have you seen Wicked? Of course. Yeah, she's- I've seen. Listen, I had a job where I could see Wicked anytime for free. Anytime I gave a tour, they'd give me a free ticket. So I've seen Wicked like all the other shows. They'd be like, "Do you want to see Lion King for free this night?" and I, I had to work during that time anyway. 
And no. Phantom, no, you Lion King once crossed. Gravity. You yeah. wanted to fight I, Gravity, I bro. I saw Wicked a few times. That show's sick. No, no, Kevin, <laughs> it's not. Listen, that show is, is wicked. wicked. There we go. <laughs> All right. D- but go then the, the one thing. The worst I, one. And the I know worst you're one. Get you know what I'm going to say? <laughs> what is, is it? There was a Batman, a, a 1950s yeah. Batman remember style. Remember the Adam West r- Batman? White transition of like a silver, like a cutout of a high heel. Like, it just pushes in. On this like horrible graphic wipe, it was. So, it's interesting because it they've had terrible. other. They've there's uh, there's a timelessness to the show that certain episodes have had, and then there's a few things like that that stand out that I I'm guessing will fade away. Well, but those just stand out like sore thumbs because last episode was like that could have been on TV even stylistically like yeah, last year. This 100%. one was like this was like whoa. This Which, is this feels standing really out. dated. This yeah. kind of goes into our discussion like Steve before Urkel th- just getting out of the time machine, or when oh, he you just mean turns Stephon, in- Urkel? Stephon Urkel? Stephon yeah. Urkel, <laughs> and he's super smooth. No, this kind of goes into our discussion before we watch the episode of how you show texting in a TV show. Yeah, and you think about in uh, Departed where you were like, oh, that one kind of stands up because it's like old phone, but there's nothing flashy. This was like. There's so many things that you're like, what are you doing? What that wipe is not going to age well. It's like oh, the gosh. bad things of in a movie now, where you just see text messages pop up. Ten years. Is there from a boardroom now. Mo- meeting where someone pitched that and they all like agreed it was a it was a good idea, or is that someone just, or like, maybe that director was like, I'm listen, I go all in, flash on these, it up, like, yeah, yeah, I flash it up. I'm I I bet you because this was probably shot in like the late '90s. I bet someone had to build that transition and just be like, all right, we got to like cut this out. Are you sure they didn't thing. just get it off of PowerPoint? I'm pretty sure they just got it. It might point. have been clip art. It's very possible. It <laughs> they did have that stick figure guy with his hand up. Yeah. It's like, boing. Hold they had guy the paper, holding the out paper a clip? The, the paper clip. Yeah. Oh, the talking paper uh, yeah. clippy. Do, do you Cor- want to use a listen. stiletto wipe for this scene? <laughs> Corey, just click here. Corey's web series. I do have a web series called Model Wife. And one of the, I will say this, we have an episode where the the show is about my me being married to a model and one episode is called assistant she has tons of assistants and it heightens to the point where one of her assistants is clippy from microsoft from <laughs> and we got a friend of we got a friend of ours who is now an emmy nom he's an emmy two time emmy winning editor for last week with john oliver he built he animated clippy to talk and and respond oh to camera, and we have a Clippy animation. Clippy That's pulls so a lot of funny. weight in this town. Anthony Miali, am, Emmy Emmy winning editor, built that's Clippy. Amazing. Yeah, maybe we can get was, Clippy as a guest on this show. That would be incredible. I just Fantastic. think that's like uh, that's that's in your web series. It makes sense, but that's like kind of her lifting off from the ground is like the level of of fantasy we're dealing with in this episode. Like it doesn't fit in the world of Sex in the City. No, it doesn't. Yeah. Let's uh, um, let's talk about. So we talked a lot about directing. Let, let's talk about the 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 actual the power aspect of this yeah. episode. It's very it was interesting, and they and and uh, what do you all think their different ideas on power was? I think uh, Samantha's was really clear. She said women should use every means necessary to get power. So she's talking about using their body to get power, using whatever they can mm-hmm. to seize the power away from uh, a man or get it in general. Carrie retorts by saying, if, if, if you say that and, and I say, uh, what about if a man did that, you would hate that. Yeah. And which I thought was a decent, decent point for Bradshaw. Yeah. Where were, uh, where were Charlotte and, and Miranda? Miranda well, you're talking, is this in the scene when they're in the Plaza hotel, like brunch scene after she wakes up and has the thousand dollars? This, when this, this was part? right. This was when they, this was during poker. This oh, was this during poker. poker when they were talking about, you know, what. What what is the the power dynamic between men and women and sex and how does it all play into it? Miranda, well, Miranda started talking about. Well, Skipper interrupts this scene. He does interrupt the scene. It it, it comes about because they're talking about Amalita and uh, and Samantha's basically saying good for her. Like she's yeah. she's getting paid. She's she's using what what God right. gave her to to get new shoes and travel the world. Right. Uh, and and I and Miranda was 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 not. I don't think feeling that so much. No, Miranda, when when Charlotte's going to go up to the artist place, mm-hmm. um, she's like, L- if he tries anything with you, we'll sue him. We'll sue him. Right. And Charlotte, or not Charlotte, sorry, um, Samantha. Uh, Samantha's like, are you crazy? Like, that is, but yeah, I mean, I think they use Miranda and Samantha because they're the most polar opposites in this. And then I mm-hmm. feel like 
Carrie gets to be the judge in the middle, and then Charlotte's kind of on her own trajectory, which I like. But I, I mean, I don't know. I think they're they're all completely valid points. Mm-hmm. Um, but then they they made a point to show that Miranda was like like held the power over Skipper. Yeah, and because so, like, they've that, been having. Yeah. Yeah, because they've been having this like crazy because Skipper's like, I don't know what to do. I can't stop having sex with her. Right. Um, and it also he makes and I a can't point, sleep over at her place. Like right. She, he says they always have sex in the middle of the day and then he never stays over. And is this episode getting better as we talk about it? Because there's a lot there's a lot of power dynamic. Like all the power dynamics are there, I think. Yeah, but but that's it's getting better because we're talking about the interesting stuff and not that half of the episode was Carrie with a fucking blow dart in her head wandering around looking at people <laughs> laugh in weird ways. <laughs> it's true though. You're yeah, right. Like there's a lot of shitty <laughs> things. Conversation, episode, yeah. yeah. The, exactly, the like, conversation of the female sex. We're working. We're basically working with a poker conversation and a conversation in a hotel while they're yeah. eating. You know. They're, uh, right, right. That's the true. You're morning. right. There was the a rest lot, of the episode. There was a lot was of like, slow motion blow dart happening. So slow motion, uh, foreign people laughing in obnoxious ways while smoking Corolla Deville cigarettes. Yes, she completely had. A, she completely. Uh, Amalita totally had a plastic cigarette holder. Yeah. There was a lot in this episode. There were so many like cardboard foreign characters that we will probably never see again. Mm-hmm. Maybe we will. Maybe Amalita shows up later on. Right. But there were a lot of just... Uh, Amelita was a great actress. She was a great, a great actress. character. She was, yeah. When And then the rest were just were, were yeah, cardboard just cutouts. Cardboard people. Uh, you guys, what about... I mean, Neville Morgan was pretty solid. Neville Morgan. I. You know what's crazy Neville is Neville Morgan, Morgan... Neville Morgan, aside from being a guitar tech for The Grateful Dead, <laughs> he had long white hair, or I, actually like a guitar tech for like Loudon Wainwright. It's like a deep okay. cut right there. <laughs> A lot of loud and white. Any NPR listeners here? <laughs> but he just had like long white hair, a little mustache, and uh, lived in like a what a like rustic Connecticut home somewhere. This is the artist that Charlotte goes to visit. Yeah, this is the artist. That he Charlotte was goes he to was visit. the guy in like your uh, grade school's grandpa who smoked pot. He was like the first person <laughs> you ever knew that smoked pot. <laughs> and then you yeah. were like. Yeah, it was before it was before pot was like criminalized in your mind by right. the Dare program or something, and you were like, "Pot's not bad. It's just weird. It's, it's just these. It's, it's just it's the, weird old people. Also, is it, is it you a just little smoke in, pot and drink pink lemonade and eat cookies and draw <laughs> cunts? It, I don't even want to do that. It is. They don't talk about it in the episode, but Charlotte does. They say that's her least favorite word, and I like how it's like it's like the older male artist that's just like ah cunt 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 in the whole episode. Well, then they it reinforce so, it by having his sweet little old yeah, wife. wife. Yeah, like, I bet like, you. What did she say? She like, says, she's, I bet you have a beautiful I bet cunt. you have a. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I think the conversation. This is the first episode that I feel like I've seen Samantha have a chink in her armor. Mm, um, how so? Well, just from even completely outside the sex conversation, her, her being, she's always just like, the restaurant's full. Like, I know a place. Oh. And this it opens up with her just being like, we can't yeah. get in the restaurant. And it doesn't let up. Like, it drives her crazy mm-hmm. until the end of the episode when they finally get seated. And that's just a different part. Because I, I I, do think it was a mystery to her since it was a female um, uh, hostess. hostess. She was like, I, I don't have my power. Right. So I'm inter- fucking pissed. I can't get in. Right. And I don't know what to do. Is there another host here? And then there's not. So she right. she doesn't have her power. So we're just yeah. That's that's that's. She's it, kind of stripped of it. And that's it, true. It showed yeah. her nuts for the first time. Like she's angry. Yeah. 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 And that it's the power of the female sex that like when she's on a level playing field with another female, she doesn't have an upper hand as much. Yeah. Wow. Pregnant pause. I'm I'm just I'm kind of playing it over. I, I'm I'm thinking back to to Carrie. Carrie got the power, you know. She she eventually like cracked the code, and it's interesting. Like, are they trying to say that Miranda approached it like a very male oriented way? Like, I'm going to use the the tools and the the craftiness that I have to uh, exert my power over this person to get what I want. Miranda or Samantha? Samantha. That's yeah, that's yeah. kind of like yeah, that yeah. would be her approach to getting past the gatekeeper, yeah. right? Like I'm going to use my sexuality while I can't, while I'm going to use money while I can't do that. I'm going to use my resources and people I know. I can't do that. And it showed Samantha getting stymied almost every like path that she could take. Yeah. But 
there was a way to win that person over and it was through you know carrie sharing something with her being a friend like yeah like it was it was such a a foreign concept like i bet samantha never would have ever been able to bridge that gap yeah because she probably would have if the woman asked samantha for a tampon she probably would have been like no like uh, i'm so angry but it showed like maybe yes yeah. maybe darren was trying to say something of like this is how uh women and women i don't know if, if samantha relate. would be angry i wonder if she'd have a comment on it she'd just be like like no oh, give honey, another yeah. yeah i yeah i don't know yeah well i think it shows but I, we, yeah i know what you mean i mean this is ahead. like yeah I, sorry go yeah go ahead go well ahead. i was gonna say we talked last time about their personalities and I think it shows kind of a thing of like Carrie's personality where we were saying like she's good at kind of interacting with all people. And uh, this was kind of a thing where she she what won in the end was her being able to have a vulnerable moment with this person and just be like, oh, we're not really necessarily enemies. Whereas it wasn't it was like a power shift. Mm -hmm. It was a power shift, but it was a power shift in. Sure. OK, we get each other. We mm -hmm. are both the female sex. It was here. like right. seeing your teacher when you're growing up, like at the grocery store. <laughs> and your teacher saying like, hi, you're six, but do you have a tampon? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know what that is. I, don't know. I, have, a some... cra I have a crayon. Is that <laughs> and like there? Those work? it'll melt inside my vagina. <laughs> Wait, you have a hot vagina. Oh, that's what the song Me? Hot for Teacher's about. <laughs> hot vagina, I got it boom. made, got it made, got it made. God, hot love of a vagina. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wonder, wonder how the teacher's vagina's going to be this year. Oh, it's a volcano. <laughs> I think I, yeah, I, I, this is like an, a, a conversation I would love to like mull over and actually think about. Like some some There's a lot of interesting things, I think, between – Samantha's approach at talking to the hostess versus Carrie's approach. And I wonder if the majority of women listening or watching like saw what Samantha was doing as being very foreign and like disgusting and brutish. And like even Carrie was like, don't go give her money. You know, like that's yeah. embarrassing. Don't ever do that. I wonder if women like saw that and were like, yeah, Carrie's right. And most men were like, go give her money. Like, yeah. go give her money. Go do whatever you need to do to get in. Yeah, and then likewise, I wonder if like at the end of the episode when Carrie like got the power from the hostess, if a lot of women were to see that and be like, "Oh yeah, that's like that's yeah. a cool thing, great thing." And then it was interesting because Carrie said she never wanted to tell Samantha how she did it. So yeah. it's like I wonder if she's like, it, it, I think they really did a, a good job showing maybe what a, a, the stereotypical difference between how a man and a woman wants to get something. Mm -hmm. I will say like power, power is one of those things that it's like all the vices of like sex, fame, power, influence, like any, any, if there are more, I, you can chime in, but I feel like all of those, they all sort of lean towards the same thing of like, if you have money, the reason why it's good is because you can buy stuff. And then once you have all your needs met, the other thing it's good for is is power. Like power oh. kind of trumps all those things. Yeah, power is at the top of 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 the of the hierarchy of vices mm -hmm. is power at the top. So you can use I think that's what makes the conversation of sex and power so intense and controversial and people have so many because every situation is not the same. Mm -hmm. So you can use sex in a good way. And some people are okay having the mutual exchange of being like, hey, I'm from France. You're single. There's no power exchange here. Like, let's fuck. Mm -hmm. I'll give you need money. I'll give you a thousand bucks. Uh, if you read that on paper, there's one way that Carrie's exchange with the money is perfectly fine. He helped her out. He gave her money. It's the order that it comes in right. when it's after sex that makes exactly. it be. Right. And, and yeah, because I, I didn't see it like she was like prostituting herself no. out. Even like I didn't really even think about that until Miranda said it. Maybe like because Carrie was pretty like like I need money. I'm not making enough. She, I have a, a habit was, of buying shoes. Mm -hmm. That whole situation was a normal situation for Carrie or for a lot of people. You meet someone, you hook up, they leave, and maybe next time they're in town a year from now, you see them. Mm -hmm. yeah not crazy it was just the fact that he he left that money that made the That's moral $1, conundrum $1, i also yeah. don't understand why she needs shoes if she can just at any point walk into the air 
She can just <laughs> walk and float into the air like we saw. Why do you need expensive shoes? You don't need to. No. But I, it, the the money thing too was interesting because it was like you're right. It was it was it was left after she said I'm like I I'm broke. You know I don't have any money. I'm not broke. But you know writing yeah. doesn't pay. But also there there's a weird thing where it's like you can be looking at a prostitution thing as a prostitution thing, but also. Or he's like, I'm a guy trying to treat you nice. Like there's a there's a money there's a power in money thing. Like if there's a thing where he's like, I'm going to leave a thousand dollars, not because you said you wanted the money, but because I want to treat you well and I want you to have no worries for the day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which that's a weird power move in itself too. Yeah. Did this, you guys remember what the note said that she I I wish we had Oh like no, the, the, I don't remember the, actually what, I, what the note yeah. said. I think it said I think it said I'm a poorly written stereotype of a French man. Oh yeah, I do believe he said that. <laughs> well, you saw when he walked My out. My name he, is actually pronounced Gil. Gil. He did on his way out. He he. It was raining, and instead of grabbing an umbrella, he just grabbed a long baguette. <laughs> so it's he was pretty poorly written. Yeah. I will say, having visited Paris, there are a lot of poorly written French stereotypes living and existing in Paris at this all is, times. I mean, this is true. this is coming from uh, America, where <laughs> where yeah. we're currently voting whether or not a pedophile should be uh, in a public office. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. I mean, well, and, yeah. and we'll know by the end of this podcast. Oh my gosh! Oh yeah, we will. Ooh, topical, topical hit right there. Topical. topical. The uh, the romantic day that Carrie has. Would, uh, the cherry blossom thing was one thing that I noticed a lot. Uh, I, I was you, actually scribbling down like this is shit that no New Yorker would ever want to do. Well, what 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 did they all get there? Do you guys remember? So they were they, in like Central they went Park. To the Alice in Wonderland uh, sculpture. Yes, is that in, that's in Central Park? Yeah, right? all that was in Central Park. Okay, then they go through. I don't know where the cherry blossom trees are. I think those are cherry blossom trees, but they're like they're uh, cherry blossom trees are raining down petals. I think they're they're those, and that's somewhere in Central Park. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they do that. They do the Alice in Wonderland sculpture. What else do they do? They do. Uh, they do that. They walk around. I don't know. They they go to the sculpture. That was it. They hang out in Central Park. Do you know what they do? They, they, no, I was writing down that no one would like. Like I don't know what what is your if you guys had someone come in from France uh, and you had to show them a perfectly romantic New York afternoon. What what would that look like? I feel like he would, would offer to go. And then Carrie'd be like, "Yeah, we're not, we're not gonna do that." I would we're get okay. two baguettes and we'd have a sword fight. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I would do. It they was, would love it. It was uh, the we're gonna open a seltzer right now. Ready? We all. There we go. Yeah, we Cut all we all were passed out seltzers during that last. We were uh, passed out seltzers. This podcast has been sponsored by Polar, hundred percent natural seltzer, calorie free. The flavor is lemon. Lemon. Uh, thank you, Polar Seltzer. If you'd like to send us. I'll say this. If Polar Seltzer wants to send us a lot of free seltzer, that'd be great. Or if they would like to send the bear that packed these seltzers into a box, <laughs> we'll take him as well. The Polar Bear. I think, uh, no, it was filmed definitely like stereotypical um, visiting New York. And I feel like Carrie would not be as down to be hanging in Central Park. Yeah. Something for, I didn't like about this episode is there's. I, I don't know. Ma- you know what, though? Sh- here's geographically. As right in, by her place. As a New Yorker with all three of us. Uh, um, it was right by her place, and they were staying in the plaza, correct? Were they in the plaza? Or they're they in the not? Carlisle. They're, oh, they're in the Carlisle. Both, mm. bo- okay, so both Upper East Side. Yeah. So they're close to the park. Yeah. Yeah. They're they're close to the park. And you yeah, know what? He's been to New York 12 times. I'm sure he's 12 been to times Central Park. Did, I mean, I know. <laughs> he I'm, did give I'm, that specific number of 12 times. I'm balancing between, yeah, like it's 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 not, they're not going to do that with their time. They're they're gonna be they're gonna be going to Dylan's candy bar Unless, in, in serendipity. Yeah, that's true. They're gonna get frozen hot chocolates and they're, they're gonna maybe go, gonna they're play gonna the get piano. Get a cup of tea at Ballsack. At Ballsack, which I did look up and Balls Ballsack is gone. Right? Is never existed. It's uh, one of the ones that I looked it up and a bunch of people are just like in episode season one episode five. Um, there's so, a place called Ball, because they have all the list of the other ones they've gone to, but. But is it supposed to be Balthazar? No, because they go to Balthazar in this. Or so Balthazar. So it's just called Balzac. Yeah. Named after the French... Uh, is he a French architect? He's a French uh, a poet. French poet, Balzac. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. 
Ball, ball sack. Ball sack, the French poet. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's kind of a cliche date to be like, we're just going to go do a bunch of stuff in Central Park. I don't know. Maybe that dude had never been to Central Park. I know people that have come to New York a lot and never been there, so whatever. But I mean, it, my cousin's lived in New York for two and a half years, and he's never been to Central Park. So. Yeah, so, I mean, that happens, too. I will respect Carrie in this, in that when she could have just bounced and got into ball sack, she, she chose, is there a female version of bros before hoes? She chose her friend first. Friends first. Well, it was because of the tushy squeeze. She, she chose. Her, yeah. She chose Samantha before a man. The <laughs> I don't know. Another another Sex and the City episode with sexual assault, though. I think we're five for five. There's a lot of. There's four a lot of. Five. Yeah, four or five. There's a lot of tushy squeezes. There's a lot of. Hey, welcome to the Hamptons. Look at my D. Yeah. Um. Yeah. There's a lot, a lot of, of things. Uh, surprise! I videotaped us having sex. Right. Now at I'm least that everyone. one was looked at as like a dude that that's what you would expect from him. Was he creepy because he was a creepy European? Yeah, he was like, listen, I'll pay $1,000 to fuck you for the weekend. Like the last guy. I don't know. It's like. They talk. All those all those creepy Europeans talk. They know. That's why they know how to, they know Amelita. They hang out in the Delta Lounge and they're just like, (laughs) see that newspaper over there? That journalist, Carrie Bradshaw. Thousand bucks, you can bang her. Spend a day in the park. She's yeah. all yours. One day in the park, some rosebuds. She says she doesn't sleep after knowing someone for the first day. Pro tip. Yeah, is that she true? Does. She well, she did say she was like, I have a rule. I don't sleep with someone I've only known for one day. And then she said, but it's already tomorrow. Hasn't in she France. already done that in? Yeah, I, I show? don't. Know, I don't know if that breaks the reality. I don't know if that breaks what she's done so far. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. You can sleep with Carrie Bradshaw and leave her a thousand bucks, but she's gonna she's gonna think about it and have some opinions and gonna talk to all her friends about it, and you're gonna get a pretty thoughtful episode out of it, minus floating in the air and terrible shoe wipes. Yeah, minus shoe. minus some not great directing choices. Yeah, you're gonna stag- get you're gonna get some good around, thoughts out of yeah. it. Yeah. Um <laughs> I think one of the one of the lines that was the most intense in this is when Skipper's just obsessed with Miranda and he's like, After sex, I don't even shower. I want to spend the whole day smelling like Miranda. And then the next shot, it's a hard cut to Carrie washing her hands after yeah. he like touches her. <laughs> Carrie's like, oh, God. Guess, yeah, that, that is it's like a, her. it's not even just like, like her perfume. It's like, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty raw. That's a that pretty raw, but, but that's a great, I will say like, listen, one thing, the star man, he's a star man. He created sex in the city. Oh, Darren, Darren star. star. The star I you talking about Skipper. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, David Darren, Bowie. David Bowie. Uh, Darren star. One thing that he is good at doing is like, just when you're kind of like, Man, poor Skipper. He's kind of like, hey, look at this creepy yeah, thing Skipper's about to say. Yeah, exactly. It's like, hey, listen, Skipper, you know, Skipper could like stop being so creepy sometimes. He yeah. shows up an hour to meet Miranda at the poker game, an hour early. Yeah. To meet her at the poker game. And he's just like, I don't you? I like when Miranda was walking by at, at that poker game and like Skipper kind of gets in her way and she turns around and just like totally 80s, like, like bros up on him. <laughs> no, she like flexes her shoulders. She's like, him. what? And he's like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just like I, I love that. I think um how many interns at work do you think Miranda just like chews out or just like does that thing when you walk when you're walking to someone in the hallway and you both are in the same way and then you're in the same way and you both kind of do this little dance? How many times a, a week do you think Miranda does that? And she just goes, Oh just move Oh uh, dude, shut you up, go. you little paralegal bitch. Don't look at me, look down. Ugh. Go, hey, have fun back at Cornell next semester, you bitch. Oh man, I want to see what their sex looks like because I feel like it's Miranda choking Skipper. <laughs> For <laughs> sure. Like, just being like slapping him, and he's like, I love you. I'm not going to shower today. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, um, man. I thought the, I, I guess one of the cruxes of the episode, or one of the suspense parts, was like, what does she do about this? This. Charlotte, what does she do about this picture? Right. And then it turns out that he takes, he draws the picture of her vagina. Right. And that seemed it like adventurous Charlotte. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That Charlotte. didn't seem like sh- something she would do, or she would like storm out and be like, this is crazy. Yeah. But I feel like she must have been, she, she was timid in the beginning. She must have been okay to be like, you know what? The wife is here. It's for art. Mm-hmm. Well, that this was- isn't a power move. I'm going to show, I'm going to do this. I mean, it it was a power move. It was just, it was like she was using what like whatever mean, means necessary to ensure that his, her, his sure. art was in her gallery. Yeah, and I think that's you know that's kind of what what she was willing to do. But she kind of accepted it. Then she got a little squirrelish and was was happy to tell the girls. Yeah, like I think she like didn't give up a 
a part of her morality for it. She just like probably took her out of her comfort zone. Yeah. They they seem to be what in, intrigued, impressed by her they, vagina. They seem to be kind of intrigued, and like everyone kind of had a like, oh my gosh, kind of moment. About yeah, it. like there's another. It's another like weird directing choice. I feel like, but at the end, they're they all, showed ha- they shouldn't have shown it at all. Well, they show you're right. They showed a picture of their faces, and they're like, <gasps> and then you get a shot, like a wide shot of the back of them, and the shot starts to pull out, and you kind of see the painting, and then that's it. And so you kind of get, I know, like, pull I'm, out. Do you guys think that that nice. picture was what was in Marcellus Wallace's briefcase in Pulp Fiction? <laughs> <laughs> I think it was. I definitely, yeah, they should, that's a little amb- ambiguity there. Yeah. It is, it, it's the thing. Okay, so at the end of boogie nights it's so funny we're talking about sex and city we're like we're out of our element let's talk about the two dudes dudiest movies ever <laughs> which boogie. is boogie nights and pulp fiction yeah but at the end of pulp we also Fi- talked about the departed at the beginning of the episode <laughs> <laughs> hey this is a bradshaw boys okay the there is a thing at the end of boogie nights where after the whole movie three hours you're like what's his dick like what's his dick like and at the end they show his penis and it is like impressive and it's also like that's his superpower like it's it's not as seeing the monster is not as scared as like imagining it the same mm. as in like alien or anything. And so in this episode, if they would have showed their faces been like, oh, you would have been like, however they painted it, Charlotte must have an incredible vagina. But then, then they end up then pulling the, out. The director should have showed them all floating because that's what that's what the, in the episode <laughs> then, when someone is happy or having a good time, they float away. They yeah. float away. Yeah. That, you, that's how great that vagina uh, is. And then you. And, is and that... then you go to credits with a vagina wipe, <laughs> a graphic vagina wipe. That's what you the cunt wipe. <laughs> <laughs> and we're out. <laughs> like, uh, can we change the name for that? I don't think uh, this <laughs> this episode has been sponsored by cunt wipes. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> oh, I'm gosh. sorry, but they do show it, and there's something that simultaneously the art that the guy created it seems to be semi-fictional. The vagina is not necessarily impressive or unimpressive. It's just, I just feel like they should have left that to the mystery of, of the viewer. Do you, guys, do you guys think a bunch of interns like painted those? They're like, all right, we need 15 cunt paintings. I wonder go, if they just like, like, went to SVA and they were like, hey, we're going to get uh, yeah. a bunch of students to just paint these. Also, the whole thing of his vagina paintings, that is an interesting thing to have to do. It'd be like, you have to create art that is yeah. beloved by many. But. It's all, I mean, it's possible that it's like, it's it's art that, well, that was somebody's art, or they got someone to paint it and be like, you're going to paint it for the show, and you get paid to paint it for the show. I talked to somebody, but total- they're like, don't worry, in 20 years, there's going to be three dudes just shitting all over it on a podcast. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just to themselves. I talked to someone, I don't remember who, but it was someone who created paintings for the Twilight movies. Mm. And that was like part of their job. They painted stuff and it was in the Twilight movies and they made a ton of money off of it. That's so crazy. you can make money off of right. painting bad vagina paintings for Sex in the City. But what I was interested in too is like this guy was such a cartoony character and he was essentially doing like bad Georgia O'Keeffe paintings. Yeah. That was like kind of like what his art was. Do you guys think the next episode he's going to be painting Balzac? <laughs> oh, I hope so. I hope when they go to Balzac. He's there, and like Balzac has hired an artist to just paint Balzacs as people wait an hour and a half for their table. He's what the if- host. He's the host with an even smaller hat. <laughs> it's, Skipper goes. Skipper goes. He's like, I, I work as an intern at an art gallery now, and he's like, I would love. To, I bet you have a great ball sack. <laughs> can you imagine? How th- there's something something truth in what that guy said that there's like yeah. power and beauty in the vagina. And I like that, that there's they, not I like that in they the fucking the word cunt because like we also haven't said that word a lot. I think people reel at that word yeah. a lot, and it, it it's is, a visceral word. It's a very visceral word, and and there is some truth in what he was saying. It is the source of all life and, and yeah. passion and beauty. And I feel like that that's an interesting thing in the episode that we've talked about a bunch, but like. That thread is like running through the whole episode. Yeah. And when we read the title, when it was like the power of female sex, I thought it would be more of like uh, every it's every woman in the episode. Every one of each one of the girls is like having sex with a different guy. And this is the power dynamics of yeah. them having yeah. sex with someone. But it like runs through a lot right. of other different ways. Yeah. Which it was cool. it was it was pleasantly different than the pilot episode which i thought it was going to be similar to yeah yeah let's uh i think the star man flipping the script on you yeah 
Yeah. There's floating and uh, shoe wipes too. Floating and shoe wipes. Let's uh, let's <laughs> let's quickly go. Let's uh, let's wrap it up by quickly going around the circle and giving it a, a one to five Cosmo rating. One to five Cosmos. Uh, oh man, this happens every episode when we do this. We talk about it, and we see, in my opinion, um, how good of a show it is. Mm-hmm. And um, I also think we all just drank a bunch of seltzer, and so I keep having to like, pull away from the microphone to burp because I had some bubbles. I think we all did it simultaneously. We did. Right there. We did. That that break, that pregnant pause was was not pregnant. It Over was, here, it was a it was a burp pause. It was a burp pause. I was Thanks, pre- Polar. Thank you, Polar. This burp has been brought to you by Polar, Polar and Cunt Wipes. Oh, <laughs> Good God, <laughs> still a visceral word. Oh, um, I apologize. Added wipes to it doesn't help. <laughs> It makes it worse. Um, I think that uh, every time we talk about the show, I I am like, this was well thought out. Like, I think the dynamics of the story of the episode were good. I think that every character, um, they their personalities each mm-hmm. came out in different ways. And one thing that is interesting is we got to see more of Charlotte, no pun intended, because we got to see a pain in her. <laughs> but we did get to see like more of a Charlotte character coming out a little more. All that being said, when we watch the episode, some of it's the shoe wipes and the floating. I feel like this is a three out of five Cosmos. Mm, three for out me. of five Cosmos. Yeah, it's Co- there's a lot. I as we talk about it, there's a lot of cool stuff about the the power dynamic of mm-hmm. of wi- women to women. Mm-hmm. Um, but three out of five Cosmos. Three out of five Cosmos. Not as strong for me. Yeah. Um, I would put it one above Models and Mayhem as an episode, mm-hmm. but I agree with Corey. One of my I think like it actually got me thinking a lot about the actual power of of sex mm-hmm. and of female sex and like those guys that in that episode are able to just be like, all right, I'm going to be in New York for the weekend. I know how I can go about having intimacy, having sex and and then just I don't know, all the conversations were so interesting. Yeah. And um and I just feel like maybe the story wasn't as compelling and and some of the directorial things, but I think as far as a conversation starter, I mean, I think it's one of the strongest conversations. Totally. And I feel like if we had some women in the room, I feel like uh, it it could be one of the strongest, most interesting conversations totally. for us to have, which maybe, I don't know, maybe there's a way we can like go back to this episode with with I would like, love that. with with women, which or is with... our plan in, in upcoming episodes. Do well, have female yeah, guests on, and that's true. And one thing that we haven't mentioned yet is that every time we record this show, there are twelve women in the corner of the room <laughs> that we have cornered Holding off. Up flash, flash signs. They're all the reason they're not talking is because they've been doing one long seltzer burp and they can't actually they get can't in get front in. Of the but soon we're gonna get them on the show. Soon, <laughs> um, the, John. The, but yeah, I think I think that would be that'd be great. But it was I I enjoyed it even though I'm giving it uh, three out of five yeah I'm, I'm similar i uh immediately after watching the episode i was at two cosmos after the discussion i'm gonna bump it up to three cosmos yeah Ooh, you little Ooh. drunk dog whoa <laughs> drunk on seltzer anyway i think uh great episode i think that was a fantastic conversation mm-hmm. and uh yeah and we're gonna we're gonna like i said we're gonna try and get some guests on here in the next few episodes and uh and we'll num- next up is number six. Number, number six. Trust and then we just six. got ninety more. <laughs> and we <laughs> have eight, we have eighty eight more after this one, and then two movies, so ninety. Perfect. More. I'm already sad. All right, everyone. I'm John Sieber. I'm Corey Cavan, and I'm Kevin James Doyle. And Kevin. this has been the, the Bradshaw, Bradshaw Boys. The Bradshaw Boys stars Corey Cavan, John Sieber, and Kevin James Doyle. The show is produced by Jeremy L. Balin. For more information on the guys, check out their website at bradshawboys.com, on social media at the Bradshaw Boys. And if you see them in the street, tip your glass. Thanks for listening. <laughs>